Do you think Amazon prematurely walked away from a fight here? Uh, you know, this is a big story. Amazon's one of the most respected companies in the world, one of the most valuable companies in the world. You know, it was a very celebrated process and a pretty creative one. Amazon would have created about $30 billion of tax revenue for the community. And I think $3 billion of credits maybe got disproportionate share of the blame or attention. Um, we did a survey of over 10,000 people around the end of the year. We found Detroit was the city that wanted Amazon most. Hmm. So over 78% of Detroit residents were looking forward to having Amazon HQ2 there. New York always perplexed me, to yeah. be honest. I mean, I expected them to go to a place that might have needed Amazon more. Yeah, I don't want to make a discreet pitch for Survey Monkey here, but <laughs> part of it is like these politicians that really got into the fight. They better have a really keen sense of what their constituents and their community wants. And I think if you're if you're collecting data, you're listening to the voices and opinions of the people you're representing. Hopefully, you have a really good sense when you kind of push Amazon away that that was in the best interest of your community. It would have created a lot of really high-paying jobs. And I think Amazon maybe is they're either negotiating or they're in fact saying this isn't hospitable for us and they're going elsewhere. But. Somebody didn't get the sentiment of the community in a good way. Well, we spoke to a number of lawmakers, opposing lawmakers yesterday, including State Senator Michael Gianaris, who was you know, one of the most vehemently opposed to this. And I asked him, is this really a win? Take a listen to what he had to say. I don't think that was worth it. Um, I, and I think the way Amazon reacted to it uh, proved my point, that they were unwilling to deal with uh, legitimate concerns that uh, this community had. They negotiated this deal in secret. Uh, and when it was discovered by the public, the uh, public outrage disturbed them. All we did was raise our hand and say, we have some questions about this deal. So defending his sort of approach there, admitting it's not a celebration that they lost. Yeah. You talk about this all the time, Emily. It highlights big tech is increasingly relevant. We represent a disproportionate share of market cap, hiring, growth, what the media talks about. Amazon, every move they make gets a lot of attention. And so I think there's a lot of backroom negotiations here. Do you do any surveys on the tech lash, um, tech backlash? And should Amazon have known better that maybe they wouldn't be welcomed like heroes? Yeah, we, we are living in a very dynamic times politically. When you look at the administration, issues which are pushing people to the right and to the left, we know that big tech is increasingly scrutinized. People are increasingly sensitive to data that's being shared, uh, to the job losses, to AI, and companies like Amazon and Facebook and Google and others are getting a lot of scrutiny and attention, and there is a place for critics on both sides to have their case made. There are cable networks which really amplify those voices, and this one is obviously a highly dynamic and situation that has probably not had the final chapter written yet. Does Facebook deserve all the scrutiny it's getting? And I ask knowing that Cheryl Sandberg is on your board. <laughs> Yeah, I have no uh, non-public material information about Facebook. Uh, they have owned up to some mistakes, and I think they're taking appropriate measures to cure them. It sure seems like Facebook has done some incredibly good things in terms of hiring and connecting the world and paying a lot of tax dollars. You know, Cheryl, I do have a proprietary view on. I've been very close to her for a long time, and she's on our board. She is an incredibly high-integrity leader. She has spent so much time and money helping others, mentoring others in philanthropy. I think she and the leadership team there are digging in deep to fix whatever issues there are at Facebook, and I'm confident that company's going to thrive for a long time. So last quick question about your earnings. You reported this week the shares did plunge. They recovered a bit today. What happened there? Yeah, we, uh, we put up a really terrific Q4. I'm super proud of all the employees of SurveyMonkey. 2018 was a transformational year for the company. We went public in September, but more importantly, we reaccelerated revenue and launched an enterprise product that can fight with the world's best survey software. So we're winning really tough deals from discerning companies. We booked our first $10 million sales quarter and put up 80% year-over-year growth. Shares had a tough day yesterday. It was the first day the lockup comes off. So if last September was the first day you could buy shares, yesterday was the first day that long-term shareholders could sell them. I think if we put up the kind of numbers that, that Wall Street's looking to, our shares will perform just fine over the long term. All right, and you just launched a big integration with Microsoft. Okay.